I have another test strategy for you. This is multiplying even or odd numbers. So all the numbers in blue are even and all the ones in red are odd. Just remember that that zero is grouped with the even numbers. They skip every other one, don't they? See how all the even blue ones skip all the red ones and then the red ones skip the blue ones or every other number that are even or odd. So there's a pattern to multiplying even and odd numbers that are going to help you when you take a test. When we multiply an even number times an even number, we get an even number. And when we multiply an even times an odd, and the community property, commutative property says it doesn't matter which direction you multiply and you get the same answer, right? 2 times 5 or 5 times 2. It's going to be an even number. But when we multiply an odd to an odd, then that's when we get an odd answer an odd product, okay? And this information can help us to know if we found the correct answer or not, or if our product will or should be even or odd. You know it's an even or odd number by the ones placed. 347 is an odd number because 7 is odd in the ones place. We know 11,574 is even because the 4 in the ones place is even, all right? Doesn't matter how big it is. So when we multiply an even 2, by an even 2, we get an even 4. When we multiply an even 2 by an odd 3, we get an even. When we multiply an odd 3 by an even 4, we get an even. See how we keep getting even? But when we multiply an odd 3 times an odd 5, we get an odd 15. Alright? So if both factors are odd, the product's odd. If both factors are even, the product's even. If you have one of each, an even and an odd, it's going to be even. If they're both odd, then it's odd. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how this is going to help you in a test. We can eliminate some answers immediately. So let's say you've got this on a test, and these are the possible answers on the answer sheet. You've got 2,326 times 42. Well, the 6 in the 1's place tells me it's even. The 2 in the 1's place tells me it's even. Our answer is going to be even. So, can A be the answer? It ends in a 1. That's odd. So, no. That's not an answer. 2, that's even. That could be an answer. How about 5? That's an odd number. Can't be it. This 4, well, that's even. So, it's going to be B or D. So now we can just do a partial bit of the equation to find out. We multiply 2 times 6 to get 12. We carry the 1 and put the 2 down. We multiply 2 times 2 is 4 plus that 1 is 5. So we know when we go to multiply this 4 times the 6, when it becomes the 4's turn, that our answer is going to go right here, isn't it? Which means when we add it, that 2 is going to come down in the ones place. So guess what the answer is without even finishing the problem? It's B. See? We didn't even have to do the whole problem. We just saw that it was two even numbers so the answer had to be even so it couldn't have been A or C. Let's try this again. We've got 2,325 times 15. Well, that ends with a 5 so it's odd. That ends with a 5 so it's odd. So we have two odd factors. That means the answer has got to be odd. So that means we can get rid of this one because the 8's even. We can get rid of this one because the 6 is even. And it's either going to be B or D. So what we do is we start doing our multiplication. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2, put the 5 down. 5 times 2 is 10. 11, 12. Carry the 1, put the 2 down. But wait a minute. When we go to do this one, our answer is going to go right here. And then when we add it, that means the 5 is going to be in the 1's place, isn't it? So guess what our answer is? It can't be that one. That's got a 3 in the 1's place. Our answer has to be D. We didn't even finish the problem. Let's try it again. We've got 2,326. Well, that ends in a 6, so that's even. And a 57, well, that's odd. Even and odd, that's going to make an even answer. So we know that this one that ends with a 3 and this one that ends with a 7 are not even choices. It's going to be one of these two. 
but look, they both end with an 8, 2. So we might have to go a little farther than this into our multiplication to find the answer, but we still may not have to do the whole thing. 7 times 6 is 42. We carry the 4, regroup it, put the 2 down. 7 times 2 is 14, plus the 4 is 18. 7 times 3 is 21, 22. 7 times 4 is 14, 15, 16. Now it's the 5's turn, so let's get rid of our regroupings. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3, put the 0 down. 5 times 2 is 10, 11, 12, 13. Now look, when we go to add this, look where we're at right now. This 2 is going to come down, isn't it? So we know that both have 2 here. We know the 8 is going to be here, and they both have 8. But look, 2 plus 3 is a 5. So we don't even need to finish the problem. We know that A is the answer. See? Isn't that tricky? So just remember that 0 is an even number, and the only time our product will be odd is when both factors are odd. The only time our product is going to be odd is when both factors are odd. Otherwise, the other combinations, it's going to be even. And if we're trying to find the correct answer to a multiplication equation that contains large digit numbers, we'll know if the answer should be even or odd. Even if you complete it, you'll know if you've got it right or not, because you'll know which ones it can't be, okay? Sometimes it might have three odd ones and you know the answer is even, you can just answer it and go to the next question, save yourself some time, all right? Okay, if you want to know how to do multiplication of larger digits like this, there's going to be a link in the description, all right? I hope this was helpful, and good luck on any tests you have, and I'll see you next video. Bye.